transport. Yep. And we have here Irene. Yes, Irene. Hello, I am a um, project lead for Incanton, so I work in our transport sector um, and I am here to just gain a little or a lot more knowledge about projects. Excellent, super, super. Uh, Steve, apologize, currently my audio and video blocked my, by my browser, but can hear. Okay, so I think... Uh, uh, we have uh, Irene, can introduce Steve because they are from the same organization. Uh, um, yeah, Steve, Steve um, obviously his audio and video is not working. Steve O'Hara work, also works for Wincanton. Um, he, I work in his team. He's the head of our transport program uh, for Wincanton. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. And also we have Dr. Muhammad here. Yeah, I can get, uh, it's my pleasure to meet all those uh, uh, cohorts. I believe we will be having more discussions in the industry and uh, how to improve the uh, current uh, management and control techniques. Excellent. Dr. Muhammad is working with us. IBIS Consultancy. He is one of our coordinators and one of our mentors and tutors working for IBIS Consultancy. Besides, he is a senior lecturer in project management, University of Dunfront. So here we go. Let me share my screen to start. So this is the first day, I think, for everybody here. Uh, yes. So literally today is just an introduction. So here I'm introducing the program. I think some of you already, I introduced the program, but we are going today into more details. So the expectation, especially the first year, you know, I know the program is quite long it's for three years, but the focus today is mainly about the first year. What are the expectations, what we are looking for, and uh, our plan, days, how many days to attend, or no, no need to attend, no attendance here, but literally it's about engagement to ensure that we are on the right track, we are helping each other, and we are getting the best use from this program. So uh, I think I introduced myself to some of you, and maybe others not. So in brief about myself, uh, I have PhD from uh, Cranfield University. Currently, I'm a reader in project management or strategic projects from University of Kent, visiting academic at Chester University, Aberdeen University, and Abu Dhabi University. I'm working for Ofqual as a subject matter expert, reviewing standards in project management, like that standard I was one of the reviewers, external examiner for project management at Lancaster and Warwick University former director of finance and uh, former director of professional development at PMI here in the UK, director at IBIS Consultancy, uh, lucky enough to be awarded the best research from Association of Project Management, APM, and currently I'm one of the academic steering committee at APM, uh, lucky enough to write the standard of project benefits management for PMI, Project Management and Institute, editorial board for different academic journals, academic steering committee for different places, and uh, just a little bit about myself here. So I'm be more than happy to lead this program. Okay, and uh, definitely we have with us other colleagues like uh, Dr. Muhammad, and uh, we have also Raymond, we have also other colleagues who will take part in this program. But in general, I'm here with you and I will take the lead for this cohort to teach PMP, Project Management Professional. Also some of the courses I will cover with you, which one I'm gonna teach and which ones somebody else is gonna teach with you. So today I'm going to talk about program design. I'm sure you know, but because we start in October today, so now we know the dates. We know the start date for the PMP, the end date for this, you know, like Gantt chart. So we can sit here, all of the timeline, you can book your calendar 
so you can book your workload and this kind of things. That flexibility, uh, personalized mentorship and personalized support. So literally we have mentorship and we have support. Mentorship is somebody to be close to you. You can talk anytime to that person. He is very professional. He knows what he's doing. He already qualified academic and also practitioner. So if you need any help, you can call him directly. You can reach me also directly anytime. But you have another support, which is technical support with the application, with submitting your documents, with submitting your papers. If you need any help uh, outside the technical knowledge, he will be with you. So I think most of you will be allocated Dr. Muhammad, who is here today with us. And uh, maybe uh, based on the workload, maybe somebody else will also uh, follow up with somebody. Mentor is not to supervise you, but is to support you, is to help you. Is if you don't understand anything, if you need anything for you know, clarification, he will be the one. If you have any technical knowledge in your professional business and you need advice, he is qualified to give you advice. He's a consultant for ages, working for IBIS Consultancy and for other places. So he can help. Definitely, I'm also here for you. If you need any help, uh, just contact me directly. I think all of you have my WhatsApp number, my phone number, so you can reach me anytime. Yeah. So project control professional. Project management, what are the rules, expected expectations, certifications, diplomas, CPDs. It's a very rich program, I would say. We are all of us fortunate to have that funded by the government, to be honest, because it is quite big and large. I would say it is could be game changer for some of us. So let me ask you, what does it mean project management? Let's just start the game. Yeah, what does it mean for you, the word the project management? Don't want to confuse you with this guy. So oh, for you, let's talk, let us you know debate here. Let's start with Simon or Masri. <laughs> okay, if I may, uh, for me, it's how to uh, manage resources, budget, everything related to uh, the cost operation in order to get the best outcome. I believe this could be the biggest picture for the project management. Excellent. Managing resources, getting outcomes, getting results. That's interesting. Yes, Simon, what do you think? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's a broad term. It, it covers the world. It's man project managers. It covers everything, basically. Um, for me, it's to get the best out of contractors, subcontractors, people, finish on time, finish on quality, um, and over oversee all of that and how best way to manage all of that because it's a lot it's a lot to manage <laughs> yes it's a generic term it's used in a lot of context to be honest yes i agree with you resources getting results yes on time within budget you know so yeah so you have certain specifications you deliver these specifications as expected as quality uh, metrics could define for us Excellent, excellent. Yep, Safa? Okay, in my, uh, from my experience, I always uh, re um, link between project management and engineering uh, or uh, uh, constructions. For me, I believe that this now start to be, uh, I don't know, it's um, cover many uh, disciplines, uh, not only uh, construction or engineering. That's why I'm trying to see how it can fit with other uh, sectors. Excellent, excellent. So only I think Simon is from construction here. Anybody else not from construction? <laughs> That's interesting. Yep, brilliant. Reem? Sorry, um, project management, I think is... Um, working together to achieve agreed deliverables so using maybe subject matter experts and working together across different work streams 
Super. Working together, teamwork, yes. Managing people, managing resources to achieve uh, outcomes, to achieve outputs. Super. And Steve? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I, it is managing something that's not business as usual, but as a, you know, a, a clear outcome or output and, you know, is fixed in duration. So essentially it's delivering some level of change or assigning some level of, of effort to reach, reach a desired outcome. Excellent. Specific time frame, specific objectives. Yeah. Specific deliverables, yes, super, very professional definition, excellent. So let me simplify for you in just a few words. Project management is all about delivering your promises within time and within budget. Whatever you promise, you have to fulfill within time and within budget. In very, very brief term. My promises could be building a house, could be building a car, could be building a system, could be building a solution, could be building a marketing campaign. So literally you build an output, you build something, anything. So project manager, I would say those guys who make dreams come true, who put things into action. So I have a dream, I tell my dream to project manager, Project manager listen to the dream, translates the dream into requirements, into specifications, into steps, into actions. And then, very simple, he can hopefully plan for this, you know, gather work together, have a teamwork, have resources to finish or to complete the project within time and within budget. So project management is very common. Everybody knows that. It is quite easy and good. I know I have to be here at 6 p.m. That is fine. The ticket is 20 pounds. So I'm going to pay 20 pounds and it will take like 20 minutes to be there. It is done. My promise is within time and within budget. Very simple. Whatever you promise, you have to achieve your objectives within time and within budget. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. Yeah. But let me ask you a difficult question now. If it makes sense to you, it does not make sense to me. Because how can you promise something about the future? And you don't know the future. Who knows the future here? Anybody knows the future? No. How can you plan in the future? And you don't know the future. It's With about difficulty. planning, <laughs> about planning, design. Plan estimate. about something in the future, but we don't know what's going on tomorrow. And this is the part of the risk management, I believe, right? I love this answer. So what does it mean, management? So if I ask you the word management, so project is a promise. Yep. Management is to deliver this promise. So management, what does it mean, the word management? Like mm -hmm. using uh, all the resources in the best way. Using resources of the best way. Yes, very good. Uh, trying to be aware of all the variables that could and um, probably will happen. <laughs> that oh, will super. Come. I love this word, aware. Yes, excellent. Excellent. Any other idea? The word management, what does it mean for you? Controlling a set of activities to reach a desired outcome. Yes, organizing. Yes, excellent. Uh, for me, it's uh, two types of management, I believe. One is for managing people and other is managing a task. So when it comes to people, uh, it's part from the management, yes. And the task, because sometimes I find only a manager without team, but he still manages. Super. So the book definition of management is planning, organizing, controlling, or uh, reviewing. This is a book definition, but simple definition for me, management is just a decision. 
decide, management is decide to hire, to fire, to promote, to grow, to reduce, to start up, to close, to add extra resource, to take off some of the resources, to increase the workload, to decrease the workload. Yeah. So all of the management is all about decisions, about the future planning, controlling, organizing. The point is, how can I decide and I cannot see? Look at this, I'm driving my car now and I can't see. How can I drive? Do you think it's safe to drive if you cannot see? Do you think it's safe to drive and you can't see? No, no. of course. No, yeah? And this is the power of project management science. Project management science, it is all about promises in the future and we should know and we should acknowledge that we don't know the future. And this is the whole thing. It's about how to deal with the unknown, how to work with the uncertainty, how to work with the things that you cannot see. You do your best to forecast. You do your best to guess. But at the end of the day, we should know that we cannot see. And here is the project management. Many people think a project management is simple. Just deliver your promises on time of the budget. I have a strategy and I want to deliver this strategy or I want to deliver these strategic objectives. Who are you to know the future and say, I'm going to do that? It is not something in your hand. So everybody think it is easy building a car on time within budget, achieving my tasks on time within budget, doing that on time within budget, which is straightforward. But what we, what I can tell you, 70% of projects fail. 70% even or more fail. Why fail? Because people think they know the future. So somebody say, look, I'm gonna, I know quality. What is the quality? I can, I can see this. We don't have a quality here. You have to deliver your promises within time of the budget within quality. Yes, that is true. But the core of the engine, probably the resources, as Simon said, Steve and the others here said, the resources, if you cannot manage the resources effectively and efficiently, you cannot do anything. If you cannot manage your procurement or resources, when you buy resources, when you get the resources on time within budget, you cannot deliver your promises. Resources here, as Safa said, could be people resources, it could be material resources, it could be technological resources, it could be access to some software applications, access to some data, because all of this some sort of resources. If you do not have the right access in the right time by the right mean, I think it will be difficult. Yeah. And as everybody said here, we don't know the future. So we should have this to plan. Risk management. Risk management is about what? Have you ever heard about the word risk? What does it mean for you, the word risk? It's something that might affect the, the process or what we are doing, like uh, uh, supplies, any, any kind of uh, something that uh, could be known or unknown, and it could affect the process. Excellent. Like surprises? Uncertainty, yeah. Yes, Simon? Um, anything that could stop you from finishing on time or in budget. Yes. A any, any hiccups, any bumps in the road, potentially, which I mean, inevitably there are. Excellent. I love this. Anything that stops you from achieving the project objectives, delivering on time of the budget. Excellent. Excellent. This is very broad definition. Well done. Yeah. Risk. What does it mean, the word risk? Yes, Safa? Yeah, risk, uh, for me, it's uh, predicted <clears throat> and uh, uh, expected as well. Um, I, I mean, when I, when I speak about uh, uh, the business, that's why we have to have a plan for the risk. If we don't know the risk, for me, it's a crisis. I, I feel it's a crisis like, <clears throat> sorry, like flood, whatever. But risk is uh, can be predicted, can be um, uh, expected. So that's yes. I, yeah. Yes, I have some fear of earthquake. So when earthquake happen, I have to run away. 
for example, okay? I have a, a fear of fire. If a fire happened, I have to run away or whatever. This can be a, like a risk because there's a probability that something wrong might happen. I may recognize it or I may not. So if I don't recognize it, maybe I call it uncertainty. Excellent, excellent. Yep. So let me ask you a more challenging question, okay? What is the difference between risk management and the quality management? Challenging question, this one. <laughs> Uh, I can speak about quality. Uh, it's how to uh, deliver uh, a project uh, according to uh, standards uh, already written on on the manual of any project manager or any project. Uh, for risk, uh, just a plan. You put it in to just um, avoid anything affect your uh, quality. That is very interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, and uh, uh, I believe uh, 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 for the quality is uh, to ensure that the outcome would be with the minimum uh, perceived by uh, the stakeholders. But uh, the risk management is something about uh, dealing with uh, the things that might affect uh, the process that uh, mentioned before or to stop the process could be a known or unknown. That's why sometimes we put a uh, risk budget, we increase the risk budget for any unknown, for any uncertainty. That's very interesting point. Hmm. Yes, Steve. So I think we've defined risk, but quality to me, quality management is making sure that whatever we deliver in terms of product meets the specifications in you know user acceptance. So if we are going to be delivering you know some level of change, that it's functional into the user's acceptance levels. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, very interesting. Okay, so let me show you something quite interesting. Quality and risk, both are the same thing, no difference. And that's why I'm asking, what's the difference? Because literally, they are both the same thing. Okay, I don't understand. I didn't get it, Angad. How come Steve now says quality is about inspection and ensuring that we deliver the right thing and it's about the quality of the process while risk as Safa says is about uh, the plan in the future okay this is a fundamental question and very important to understand to be honest if you don't understand this you cannot claim that you understand the project management okay this was one of the reasons we have management science now these days so let me give you an example about the differences between them, okay? This is a real example given by somebody called Deming. We will talk about him later, the father of management, what we studied these days. We have a problem that our vendors always late and our vendors are not reliable enough. The best strategy to deal with this risk is buying more inventory just in case, because we cannot rely on the su suppliers. So much risk in the process. So literally, I'm going to pile up inventory just in case. We have a COVID. Let's run to Tesco and buy a lot of stolen papers just in case. We have a problem. So let's pile up material just in case. I'm taking my car to Birmingham, my wife taking the food, all of the food in the house, in the car. Why you get all of the food in the house? She says, just in case, I'm good. we don't know. Birmingham is a nice city, it is not desert. We have to see some shops there, you know? But the point is, or the mentality is, piling up just in case, okay? So Deming said, this is not a risk management problem. This is, should be, quality management problem. 
Okay. He says, look, we, if we can control the vendors, how can I control the vendor? Let's say, for example, I have some of my guys working in the vendor side. And instead of picking the shortest, unsafe, unreliable route, let's take the long but reliable and the safe route. Let's focus on the steps that we can standardize as much as we can. The more we can standardize, the more we can control. If we have this, so literally no need to pile up inventory, I can reduce the level of inventory to be just in time. I get the inventory only when I need. So quality is about you think that you can control the environment through having checklists, through having frameworks, through having standards, quality assurance aspects or metrics. But when you feel that it is out of your hand, so your mind shifts directly to risk management mentality. So, and that's why, by the way, if you look at most of professional certifications in risk management, they also give certification in quality. And those give certification in quality, give certification in risk like ISO, International Standardization of Operations. They have certification in risk and they have certification in quality. And when we go for MOR next year, we will teach you the same thing, risk and the quality, literally the same mother. But how we approach the problem, here it comes. And that's why risk audit and the quality audit sometimes from similar department or could be from the same department. So risk and the quality together, but it's all how you approach the problem. So all what you said is correct, by the way, nothing is wrong, but I'm going a little bit more in deep. Risk is more about when you think you can't see, what shall I do? When you think that I cannot control, when you think that a lot of probabilities and a lot of scenarios and a lot of things. So usually when we see something like that, unfortunately, the best strategy is to pile up resources, pay for insurance just in case getting more resources just in case, getting more oil or petrol just in case, getting more food just in case, getting more stuff, getting more people, getting more time. And instead of going to the train station at the time, let's go early 20 minutes just in case. I don't know the traffic. So let's be there early 20 minutes just in case. Okay, so risk management mentality is different from quality and both are important because literally you can't control everything around you. So that's why we need to think about it, which things can be under risk management and which things should be under quality management. The more you can control the environment, the more you can manage your project. I'm, I'm sure you heard about Prince2 certificate. Have you ever heard about these guys, Prince2? Yes. Yes. You know the abbreviation of Prince2? What is the abbreviation of it? Yeah. Projects in controlled environment. So we as a project managers to deliver our promises on time within budget, probably we, this is what we should do. We should control the environment as much as we can. The more you can control the environment, hopefully the more you can deliver your promises on time within budget. The less you can control the environment, the less you could manage the performance of the project. This is not one plus one is two. A lot of scenarios could happen between and the agile project management, we will talk about it later, come also to give some solutions to this problem. What is the problem? The problem is we promise to deliver something in future. By the way, the name of this is standard project control professional. This standard is for only one thing. How can you estimate cost and the time precisely? Can you imagine three years of studying? <laughs> How can we deliver our promises on time within budget? This is a whole program, three years. 
just to have one thing. I wanted to estimate the time and the cost in a very precise way. Why it's a big program, three years, why should we study a lot? Because literally all of this program deal with something. Nobody knows the future. And that's why we need to control what can be controlled, quality management, control what we can be controlled through resources management, using governance and the government mentality, using different frameworks, approaches and the methods, methodologies and tools, all of this to understand the environment, to explain the environment, to control what can be controlled and to manage what cannot be controlled. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Only for Simon makes sense, others no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Safa, what do you think? Uh, for me, I'm still uh, don't know how to link risk uh, with quality. Um, as far as I understand is when we have risk, uh, that means it leads, it must lead to a quality. Is that correct? So let's give you an example. If one day you are not sure that you can arrive your train stop on the time, what shall you do? So you have, for example, train to London, 6 p.m. And the road is very crowded, congested. So what shall you do? Shall you be on time 6 p.m. or you shall come a little bit early? Uh, I can go and sleep over somewhere. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. This is what we call risk management mentality. Why? Okay. Because you feel now you cannot control the environment. You believe or I believe or we believe no control over traffic, no control <laughs> over the process. So let's take our mitigation plans. Let's be there early one day or one, two, three hours just in case. Okay. Safa so now had a course with Amgad on project management and Amgad taught her, we should be able to control the environment. Let's find a way, okay. I can't control the environment which is driving by my car to go to train station. What if I took the underground? Underground is more predictable and the environment is more controlled. So if you have access to underground, do you think you need to book a night before or you go two, three hours just in case or you just, you can come maybe on time? Yeah, I don't need to sleep. Well, See? Yeah. This is a mentality of quality management. You use the tools that can help you to control the environment. Let me give you an example, which is quite, you know, real case study, very, very interesting. Do you know the air conditioner? Have you ever heard about the air conditioner? In the UK, we don't have air conditioner. You know the air conditioner? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Everybody here know about it? Doreen? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know how, how this one it was invented? It wasn't for people in Saudi Arabia or in Kuwait or anything like this. It was in America. The story is quite interesting. Deming, the father of new man, man, the father of modern management, he always says control what you can control. And he is a father of project management, by the way. If you go to early editions of PMI or PIMPO, you will see just a copy of Deming uh, books. He has a very interesting point. Control what you can control as much as you can. Okay. So the guy was in manufacturing of grants, of garments, clothes. And he discovered something quite interesting. In the summer, production quality is really poor. The defect rate is high. In the winter, the defect rate is low. And also he found that second floor always has poor performance. While in the, in the first floor and ground floor, the performance is good. So it was a question mark. At this time, risk management mentality in the summer, produce more just in case. In the top floor, we don't know it's a problem, but what I can say, please produce more just in case. Until that guy, he said, okay, we should control. We should control the environment. What is the problem? By investigation, he found that the heat makes the gears loosey, you know, and that create problem. 
So he said, I need to control the environment. How to control the environment? And this is the invention of air conditioning, just to control the atmosphere, the weather and humidity in the workplace. So the machine process should be standardized. Yeah, make sense? Anybody still here? <laughs> yes. Yes. So okay, is... sorry, I'm got the one question, please. Yes. Yeah, I'm just a little bit confused between the risk management and the quality, because I understand from your example that uh, you plan uh, to get to the train station, whatever, in the our best time. You can wake up early. You can uh, say, choose the underground, whatever the solution. Okay, so there is different of uh, different ways to achieve uh, your. Uh, requirement so you can choose according to several factors is this here the quality uh, interfere and like saying I, I am just limited to a budget on a cost for this type of journey okay I cannot take the underground I can take much something cheaper I can walk yeah, you can decide if the level of the risk is acceptable, so you, should, you just accept. It is all about how we deal. Again, it's very simple. Project management is very simple. Delivery of promises with a delivery promise on time within budget. That's it. Simple, very simple. But the problem is because we don't know the future, a lot of it changes in the future. A lot of it changes in the environment. The environment is not fixed. You know, so many things in the in the world around us. So literally, whole project management, as much as we can, is to control and regulate what we can control and regulate, what we cannot control and what we cannot regulate. So just in case mentality, okay? By any mean, by insurance, by accepting the risk, by having different scenarios, by having people ready just in case, you know? But at the end yeah. of the day, quality management mentality is very efficient and effective because you try to control the environment using indicators, using uh, technologies, using uh, um, precautions, you, you know. So as much so, like health and safety, health and safety, it's risk and the quality. Because once you have good health and safety system, you prevent the problem. Okay, so this is quality of the work. If every day somebody dies because of that, Probably of the work, you know, the, the, the whole business will be shut down. So you need to ensure the quality of the operations so that people are protected. So again, it is how we manage the thing. Quality is about controlling the process to prevent the issues. Risk is when you think or when you feel that is something out of your hand. So you need to have just precautions, just extra inventory, extra time, extra resources, just in case. Yeah, makes okay. sense. Okay. By the way, this is the whole three years. The whole three years we are going to talk about scope, time, cost, quality, resource management, risk management. And the most important thing is the blood of projects, communications, communications and the stakeholder engagement. Communication is sending the right information to the right person so he can take the right decision. Just to remind you, management, all of the management science, all of the management science is one thing, decision. Decision is two things, capacity to see, hear, Criteria, take decision. All of the management science, you know, I'm talking to you like for 20 years working in research and experience project and management science. I can summarize management in very few words. The capacity to see, the capacity to listen, you have the right criteria, you take the right decision, simple. So all what we teach, how to see the right information, all what we teach is how to get the right knowledge and the right criteria. So when you take the decision, take the right decision. Again, it is how we 
take the decision. And this is how we influence others when they take decision. So when I communicate half of the information, the decision will be taken based on half of the information. When I give so much information, information overload and somebody else will not be able to take the right decision. Communication seems like blood for me. You know, how you circulate the information in your team, make them all fully functioning. Send them distorted information, they will not function as should be. This is communication. Stakeholder engagement is another story. Any idea about what does it mean, stakeholder engagement? Um, managing expectations. Managing expectations is very interesting, but this is managing expectation, not engagement. Uh, no. It is how to get engagement is to manage expectation. Well done. But engagement is different from expectation. Is to uh, uh, always communicate with the stakeholders. To this is how to him. engage. Yeah. About involve uh, stakeholder into decisions. When this take is decisions. how to engage. Involvement is different from engagement. I may involve you, but you are not engaged. Yeah. Oh, um, maybe uh, communication uh, through channels. Com communicate uh, with yeah, your. I may communicate you, but you are not engaged. You don't reply to my emails. How to communicate with them? <laughs> yes, communication in, in is a... just a tool, but not engaged. Not necessary. Yeah, communication is good. Involvement is good. Managing expectation is good. All of these different <laughs> strategies to engage, but engagement is different. Uh, I think it uh, it means that you report each uh, phase of your project with with uh, with the stakeholder, so they will keep be updated and engaged. Excellent. But again, this is how we can engage them. This is not engagement. Make sure to have feedback from stakeholders. Again, getting feedback does not mean engagement. It's just a strategy to improve engagement. And by the way, this yeah. is the biggest point because most of us misunderstand engagement and use a strategy as, as engagement. It's not. Engagement is, if you know the engagement, you can develop more creative strategies. I was just in the last few weeks talking to members of parliament here in the UK. And we had a problem with mega infrastructure projects. Maybe some of you saw the pictures on the social media. Uh, I was addressing the point that the government is involving the citizen, not engaging the stakeholders. And this is a big issue. And that's why one of the main reasons why projects fail, why construction projects fail, why government projects fail, simply because we involve, not engage. Uh, so you believe uh, uh, could be like, um agree i mean agree upon the project or agreement among each other this is far better now irene you, you didn't say anything irene we, we can't hear you Irene, I, we can't hear you. I think she's having some technical difficulties. Yeah, that's fine. So Steve here. Yes, Steve. What do you think about engagement? Engagement, I think, oh, I was going to say projects are typically, oh, I was going to say, managing people and engaging people is typically the most challenging thing to do in working in a large organisation. You know, stakeholder marketing and understand how you effectively engage is, is usually one of the biggest challenges because people have different motivations in terms of their interest of the project and it's usually the most critical critical cool thing because you know these are the stakeholders that are going to deliver the outcome of the project so it is about how you engage with them effectively to be able to deliver you know the desired outcome for the project excellent excellent so steve here is explaining to us why engagement is important. And I agree with you, engagement is very serious. As Safa said, people agree, people accept. Engagement, in simple terms, how much is they love you? 
So stakeholder engagement, how much emotionally they attach it to this project. Is it important? Yes. What is the difference? I can tell you. I may communicate and they don't reply back. I may involve, but they try to make life difficult because involve is listening to the feedback and involve listening. They want to destroy the project. They don't care about the project. They don't care about the success of the project. So literally contradicting ideas, the, 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 the storyline is not clear for you and for them. Engagement is a very different. If you control the heart, easy to control the mind. If you control the mind, easy to control the muscles. And the project management always remember is to control the environment. We call it project control professional. This is the name of the whole degree. It is about controlling people minds. It's about controlling people hearts. It's about controlling people muscles. Later, we'll talk about the difference between governance and the governmentality, different approaches to control the environment. So we should control as much as we can, control the process, control the resources, control people, control customers, control expectations, control process. And by the way, the, the word the management, sometimes we define it as control, okay? Always remember, project is simple delivering your promises within time within budget it can be done only if you can control the environment because nobody knows the future so you try as much as you can to control the environment so stakeholder engagement is literally capturing the hearts so later you can manage the minds you can manage the perceptions we don't see what's going on we see what we wanted to see our emotions control our understandings, our emotions control our perceptions, our emotions control our arguments. I always say, this is quite funny, okay? This is far away from that, the, the program here, just for fun. Have you ever seen group of monkeys kill another group of monkeys because of religion? Have you ever seen something like that in your life? Never. Because... No. We have emotions. Monkeys do not have emotions. And that's why you never see wolves in monkey life. Yeah, they can fight on the land. Part from that, they don't care. But for human beings, we may fight for the race, for the color, for the religion, for the background, for so many things. And engagement is quite crucial to avoid this kind of possible discrimination, possible racism, possible misunderstanding for reason or no reason. Stakeholder engagement is as a heart. By the way, for PMP exam, when we go for PMP in detail, one of the questions that you will see in the exam, what is the main or only job of project manager? And give you scope, time, cost, risk, all of this. The only one thing that more project manager must do, stakeholder engagement. Time, you can give it to time planner. Cost, you can give it to cost planner. Scope, you can give it to scope planner. Quality, you can go send it to quality management. Procurement, you can ask H uh, finance or HR or procurement management to support you. Risk management, risk management can help you. Communication, you can ask public relations or communication managers to help you. The only thing that nobody can do except you is a stakeholder engagement. Make sense? Okay. Yes. Yes, thank you. Super, super. So this is PMP, and this is a whole program. So PMP, we will cover scope in one day, time in another day, cost in another day, quality in another day. So every day we cover one of them. Every one of those, we have tools, we have techniques, we have steps. Project management, uh, because Safa was asking me, project management is about uh, construction. Project management is managing anything. You can't manage a business without project managers at all. It will be all over ideas, but nobody will put these ideas into action. Why strategies fail? Because literally, the, nobody translates this into projects. 
And that's why we have program management and the portfolio management. Program management is a mean to deliver organizational strategy. Portfolio management is a mean to deliver organization mission. And the project is the building unit of the program. Program is a building unit of the portfolio. And this is a governance framework to push organization forward and to deliver transformations. So we will cover that in MSV when we go for program management and the strategic execution framework. So literally project management is not only for construction, but you can say for everything you have in your life, as long as you want to promise people, you need to have some probably skills of project management. Yeah, makes sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Steve, yep. Yeah. Technical problems again, is it? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques. We will cover all of this. So each we call it knowledge area, like a scope knowledge area, time knowledge area, quality knowledge area, risk management knowledge area, procurement knowledge area, stakeholder engagement knowledge area, communication knowledge area. Each one of those knowledge area, we have knowledge, we have skills, we have tools, and we have techniques. So that's why this course is quite big. PMP is quite big. It will take uh, at least two months of November and December, because this is the foundation of everything comes after. At the end of the day, to meet the project requirement, which are simple, deliver your promises on time within budget. Regardless of the promise, we have to fulfill this on time within budget. Yep, happy so far, guys? Yep. Yes, excellent. So now let's move to another strategic point. Now I take you from the first year to second year, and now I'm moving to the third year. Because project control is not only estimating the time and the budget, but literally why you have this project in place. At the end of the day, any project should contribute by any mean to the strategic objectives of the organization. If you have a project that does not push organization to achieve one of its objectives, this project is useless. And the output is useless. We have output, we have outcome. Uh, and and uh, one hour ago, when we asked you about project management, some of you talked about outcome, some of you talked about results, but this is not true. Project is to deliver output. What does it mean output? I come on my time, does not make sense to me. Coming on time, it is project output. I finished my software on time. I don't care. Oh my God. I thought it's everything in the life. No, not because you give me the food in the right time. It means I'm happy. No. Okay. So we need to think a little bit more strategic. Once we have the output on time with the budget does not mean that you are in the paradise. No, that is not true. It's just a part of the story. It's essential to deliver the promises on time and budget. But the most important is the benefits and the value from investing in this project. Why we have marketing campaign? Yeah, I'm happy that we have the marketing campaign on time and budget. We spend one million pounds to get 2,000 reach. Sales zero. Is it a successful project? Definitely no. Definitely no. So it is not about just the scope, but literally we need to have a bigger scope. This topic is not mainly in this year. This topic will be covered in detail in the third year when we talk about the strategic project management. So usually any organization have internal and external environment. And this makes people think how to cope with this environment how to position myself in the right way so I can sustain and grow. So any organization watch and see, listen and document what's going on inside and outside. Based on this, they develop strategies. 
they develop strategies, policies, and the initiatives. So they have strategy, strategy two, strategy three, policy. We will talk about policy making later and the initiatives. Why? Because they see the life is changing and we need to change to cope up. So that is why based on this, they define some of the problems to push the organization forward. Now we moved from the mentality of building something on time within budget to a bigger scope, which is why we build this. So we need to see the whole picture. So every program based on the program have some projects. And that's why this is you here. These projects aim to deliver a change in the business process, change in the performance, a change in what we do. And this is what we call transition. So I used to drive, now I take the train. I used to come walking, now I'm taking the car. So by changing the practice, I change my KPI. Have you ever heard about KPIs? Yes, I, I know about it, yes. Yeah, key performance, key performance indicators. Yes, excellent. So any business have set of KPIs, key performance indicators, and any project by any mean should be reflected in the KPI systems or the dashboard of the company. That, so now Simon have a new project, building a house. If this new house does not affect his KPIs, key performance indicators, make extra money, why I have this business? So everything we do in business should be reflected by any mean in the KPIs. No change in the practice, no change in the KPIs. If I keep doing the same practice all of the time, I think my performance will be the same. But changing in the policies, in the process, and how we do the things here, we change that performance. And this all lead to transformative operations, which is the new stage. So project management can be perceived as very narrow. Just, I want to deliver my promise on time of the budget. I don't care about anything else. And this is the focus of the first year. Second year is more perspective about risk and the environment. Third year is about why we are leading projects. Make sense? So for first year, just to deliver your promises on time of the budget. Second year, bigger perspective, risk and the quality. Third year, it's mainly about why, how this all contribute to the strategic objectives, how to formulate a strategy and build the strategies based on projects. Make sense, guys? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense, Simon? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Steve, yeah? Yep, good place, James. Thank you, I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Safa? Yeah, all good, thank you. Excellent. Masri? Yeah, everything is good so far. <laughs> Super. Do you have anybody else here? Irene, you still there? Hello. Yeah, makes sense. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. So this is the relationship between project, program, and portfolio. So having one thing like a project, it is the first year. So the first year, our focus is all mainly about deliver my promises on time and within budget. This is the key focus of the project manager. So I can hear Steve now saying, I'm good. I'm head of planning. I don't care about this. I'm more senior position. Yes, Steve, I agree with you, but you need to understand the project manager. And I know you have plans too, and you are a very clever guy anyway. But what we are doing here is how we manage projects efficiently and effectively. So having the projects together and understanding the chemistry between projects, understanding the harmony between projects will help you to coordinate, collaborate, to achieve some of the strategic objectives, what we call program management. This is to coordinate projects in harmony so that we can achieve some of the strategic objectives of the organization. On all level, the portfolio management, it is higher level or the highest level board of directors focusing here on managing cash resources. And also the main thing is to achieve organization mission. I don't think one bridge can make any difference in the life. 
but group of bridges plus hospitals plus hotels can make this inhabitable place. And it does not make sense that I put all of my money in this area and the other areas are remote or in disadvantage. So portfolio manager comes to allocate the finance and the cash in, in, a, in a purposeful way to ensure that the whole business is moving in the right direction. So we are going to cover project management first year, program and the portfolio management third year, because you need in the third year to keep focus on strategic objectives, how to direct the projects to achieve the uh, organizational objectives. So now I can hear Safa says, I'm good. I don't care about project management, nothing to do with me in business. Yes. So to know why we need to know what the other options. If I, if I don't care about project management and I need to run my business, not in project management approach. I don't want to, to attend this course. It, it's not really useful. I think I can manage my business in my old way. Look at this. This is normal organization. These guys doing the same thing every day. They are doing the same thing every day and they are just gear in a big box. If one of these guys tried to push harder, do you think others will be happy? No. No. And that's why your organization may fire you because you are overqualified. Because being overqualified will put others in trouble. What if one of these guys a little bit tired and they cannot run in the same pace? Do you think others will be happy? No, and it cause problems. No. no. See? So literally, I don't care much about how much you know. I don't care much about your qualification. All what I care about is just to be in the same pace, the same speed. And your manager just an ax here. If you innovate, it's not good. If you are creative, it's not good. Why? Because innovation, it means you are going to stop this gear. Stopping this gear will destroy the whole machine. This culture, stopping people to talk. Talking is not good. Ideas are bad, harmful. Because the system is not designed for people to talk. The system is designed to be a gear in a box. This is what we call functional organization. You are promoted not because you are smart or you're creative. Literally, you are promoted just because you know the pace of the speed and you are the best person to manage the pace of the performance. Not because you are clever, not because you have creative ideas. Is it good? Yes, efficiency, probably efficient. But do you think this organization is moving forward? Yeah. No. So this kind of organization, we don't know whether we are doing the right thing or not. We're just doing the same thing every day. Routine, bureaucracy, the same steps, the same process, the same structure, the same standards, the same tools, the same techniques, the same results. No change in the practice, no change in the performance. You can't even push harder and the good guys will leave sooner or later because they feel they are too restricted to be useful to the place. Working um, forever, yes. Um, I'm just saying, but some uh, organization, <clears throat> sorry, if they make profit, enough profit, and their strategy is just uh, um, existing, it will fit. No need to uh, upgrade or to develop. Or to... It is not about profit. It is about people here. This one is good. It's not bad. But the problem with people there, you know what I mean? It is good to be efficient, but... Are you in the right direction? You need to understand the whole context. If you are still selling typewriters, nobody will buy. You are efficient, but the typewriting machines are not used by anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, we have, uh, sorry, I mean, we have a clear example like uh, Kodak and Nokia. They were on top and eventually they have gone. Yes, 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 well done. So Nokia was like this. 
very efficient, not accepting ideas, no space for ideas. And when some, so, something comes in you, they just become out of the business. So it is not bad. And sometimes we push the organization to be look like this. But we need to understand this type of organizations, efficient, speedy, but at the same time, stagnating. You know, stagnating is like rigid, which is good sometimes, but for long term could be a disaster. No space for lessons learned, no space to learn up new stuff, no space to document, no space to plan. By the way, organizations up to 1950 was like this. Planning is a new invention. Planning comes in like 1970, 1980. The word the planning was, 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 wasn't accepted by many religions, by, by the way. It was forbidden for many religions and many societies because planning is about the future and talk about the future. You are challenges of God, which is a big thing in many business. And that's why Deming, we will talk about him later. People in America, conservative people in America, kick him out. All of his ideas in management was literally was in America. Well, sorry, was in Japan because people in America didn't accept the idea of risk, the idea of uh, planning. Who are you know people to plan? Who are they to plan? But project management is very different because project management you break down the strategy into projects. Yes. So project management, every project is a new start. So you have a space for lessons learned. You have a space to learn a new stuff. You have space to document your lessons learned. And by the way. <laughs> for PMP if you do not know this you will fail in the exam because PMP one of the main pillars of project management is lessons learning you need to have a space to document your lessons learning and by the way when we finish this program the assessment no exams okay the body will assess you will ask you simple questions one of them is are you documenting your lessons? How you document them? Because one of the basics of project management is documenting lessons learned, archiving lessons learned. Because one of the main principles of project management in planning, we have to use historical data. If you don't have historical data, if you don't have access to historical data, if you don't understand or absorb the historical data, literally, you will fall in the same mistake again and again and again and again. So PMP, you will not pass in PMP exam if you do not believe in this. Lessons learned everywhere. So I always ask you a question like this for PMP. You, hand, you, you finish the project, you hand over to the client, client pay you, your manager happy, Everybody is happy. The program is closed? No. The program is closed only when we document lessons, lessons learned. Another question, they always ask you, you have a new idea, you start a project, you build up a project, and you do get great jobs. Is it good? No. Why? Because before I start a new idea, I must consult the lessons learned. Okay? So literally, this should be something we should care about it during the whole program. And our mentors here are helping you, myself will help you, is to ensure part of your new practice, how you are going to document this. Not now, of course, we still have three years, but I'm just giving you some expectations. Cross-functional thinking, a more system thinking because project management is about teamwork, not group work. Have you ever heard about the difference between group work and teamwork? Or what is the difference between them? Group work and teamwork. Uh, for teams, I believe that uh, their task should be, uh, uh, each task should uh, combine with the uh, other task. So uh, the end is, um, one thing, but for groups uh, or group, I think everyone can work in certain area and somehow to be connected later on. But this one is accumulated one by one by one. So everyone depends on the other or, or on his colleague for teamwork. I don't know. No, no, that's yeah. fine. That looks yeah. good. Yeah. 
maybe I can add that uh, the teamwork is about making use of the skills of each member and how to blend all together so they can work as a team. Uh, group work are separated team members, as uh, Tapa mentioned, and they're working uh, separately, uh, are not sharing uh, ideas together, something like that, maybe. Very interesting. Simon, what do you think? I mean, it's a complete guess, but um, teamwork, would, for me, would be a set of people with all with individual specific skills, all focused, all geared towards the same goal, all giving in their individual parts to produce one final result. And group work is a group of people all working on the same project with doing all the same thing, essentially. So say you had a group of artists on one painting, they're all painting a little bit, but they're all painters. Whereas teamwork would be, you had someone that made the canvas, someone that makes the paint, someone that makes the colors, another one with a paintbrush. That's, it's just a guess though, I don't know. <laughs> Excellent, yes. Teamwork is having different people, or sorry, different backgrounds and different education, different specialization, the same group, while group work are typical identical people coming together. Let me give you an example, okay? I give you one million pounds to start a business. If you are not educated person, the first thing you are going to do, you are going to call your brother, your cousin, your friends, the people you trust, the loyal people to you, or you think they are loyal to you, the people who are similar to you in everything. Guys, I have a million pounds to start up a business. Good in the beginning, yes, because we are similar in everything. We feel safe together. We feel that we are supporting each other. But we have a psychological contract here, which is we are similar. And this is later is a dilemma. Because later, if I see that you are richer than me, I will backbite you. If somebody says, you know, Simon is better than you, I'm good. Say, no, no, no. I know he was cheating when he was young. I know he has a bad history. <laughs> These guys, why? Because I feel invited, because we are similar. We compare each other. So group work in the beginning, the harmony looks great. But over the time, they fight over personal issues. While in teamwork, it's very different. I'm educated now, and I need to hire the right accountant, the right marketer, the right finance, the right HR, the right people. In the beginning, I don't know them. In the beginning, I don't trust them. In the beginning, I don't feel safe with them. But later, if somebody says, Angel, in your business, the best marketing manager in the world, do you think I will be mm, feel invite or anything like this? No, I'm happy. He's the best marketing manager and I'm, I'm best finance manager. He's the best engineer. We don't have a problem. So we always push up together to forward. Why? Because there is no space to compete between each other. And all project management accreditations, all I can say because I'm working for all of them, okay? We do not have group work. Always group work with its characteristics is the wrong answer. In ITIL, in PRINCE2, in PMP, in MSP, any certificate, for any reason, if you see a case study, that group of people who are similar working together, trust me, this is a wrong answer. Literally, because in all pro project management certifications, we believe in team, which means different specializations working together. We should not, never, ever have three identical people in the same working place. The identical people, it seems like magnetic, they will always fight. They look happy with each other, but they are always killing their backs. Bad boy. It's, it's somehow like a, a football team who uh, compete in a group. Yes. If you have players. four Musalah at the same time, they will fight with each other. <laughs> yeah. And always when you say when about people who are going to marry, I will always say, look, don't marry somebody who has the same profession like you, typical. Over the time you have trouble, it's good to have differences to fight. So when you fight, you love each other more. So typical people similar 
they're always competing. And this is over the time not healthy for the project performance. So project management is about teamworking, system thinking, and the cross-functional thinking. It's all about you, and this is not easy, and that's why we will talk about conflict management and how to manage conflict, how we create the conflict, how to ensure the conflict is always there, because conflict, it means movement. No, no conflict, it means stagnating. Yeah, and stagnating is not good for the project dynamics. Yeah, make sense, guys? Yes. Yes. yes, thank you. Super, super. So when we finish this, this is the aim of the program, is to be head of planning. So this is a title at the end. This is the title we are aiming for. Estimating lead, project control manager, planning, planning lead, head of cost engineering, heads of profession, head of projects, uh, risk manager. So this is the only accreditation, I think, uh, for risk management. So literally, hopefully all of you will have, I think already you have these titles and that's why you have the apprenticeships. It's all is to upskill you for getting this in a more professional way. We tailor, so I can see now we are from different backgrounds. So we tailor this based on you. So some of you may drop some of the courses and add different courses. So I know in mastery, for example, will add ITIL and the ITIL master route. So he will take off some of the programs and he said, look, I want more uh, uh, ITIL. Steve and the Urine said, look, I'm not caring much about health and safety. I want more in business analysis certifications. Okay, so for you, I will give you all of the programs. And uh, again, it is customizable. So not all of you have the same route. They are probably the same start, which is a basic PMP. And then you can pick up your route. So we are very flexible to fit with all of the differences. So this program will have two degrees at the same time. I know all of you have level six undergrads degree but this will supplement your degree with another degree in project management specialized, plus we have level seven. So all of you, if you take the route of master in project management, you will take it. Some, I was heard by somebody, I'm interested more in diploma level seven in strategy and leadership, that's fine. We can drop diploma level seven in project management and we can replace it by diploma level seven in strategy and leadership. Here, professional certification and project management. Again, you can replace some of them as you wish. And we have library of CPD. So when we feel any weakness in your performance, we can supplement you with some of the CPDs. Yes, Simon. Oh, sorry, was I saying something? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that was an accident. <laughs> uh, so the program is structured. The first year project control. So literally control. Second year is risk management, and quality, procurement. Third year is about leadership, strategy, and the governance. So I think all of you already discussed that before. So first year, we have level six. And so, sorry, this, over the three years, we have level six and level seven. We have around 100 CPD and project management, business skills, logistics, and business ethics. First year, we got two certificates, PMP and PMISP. Uh, SP here is a scheduled prof professional, not performance, sorry, scheduled professional certification. Second year, we have certification in risk management. And uh, uh, I haven't talked to, to Safa yet and uh, Simon because I think Simon was more about health and safety, maybe Safa more about business analysis. Uh, third year, about program management and project management office. So from project level to program level to strategic level, like the pyramid. Yeah. So this is the standard. Again, it is customizable, that's fine. Don't worry about the timeline because now we have a new timeline. So from November to October, we have some CPTs to warm up just to touch the water. And then we will go for PMP certification. This will be live interactive like this. Okay, it's not, it will not be face-to-face, -face, but live interactive. It will be over six uh, weeks. And then we go for project management. This is the first module in level seven, the program project management. Uh, 
After that, we go for schedule professional. Then we will have some hands training on project management software. Again, you can, some of you I know, they say, I don't want the software application. We could replace this by other things. Yeah, we can. Everything is customizable. And that's why you have a mentor and myself. So if you feel that's too much, that's fine. I'm good. We want to slow down. If you want, this is too little. Okay, so we can. We have the minimum is 200 hours per year. 200 hours, not studying time, sorry, not, not, not the material time, not teaching time. 200 hours, it means studying with the material, with the, uh, with the, with the, with the, with the meetings, with everything, okay? So the minimum is 200, the maximum is 300. Second year, more about uh, risk management, procurement, logistics. Uh, I know some of you, I don't remember who, told me I want a certificate of leadership from NHS Academy. Yeah, you can have this. So if you're not more about, for example, Safa may say to me, look, I'm good. Uh, project logistics, I don't care about that. I don't, I don't care about contract management, for example, because she is more business oriented. So we can replace this by a certificate of leadership, which is quite prestigious, quite large uh, in leadership. This is, I would say, one of the best certification in leadership. It is from NHS Leadership Academy. So we need just to adjust with Safa later uh, because I think procurement for her will not be the best for, uh, for her. Uh, if she wants to have level seven, again, I will have one-to-one -one meeting so we can tailor this. The third year governance, it's about how to write professional report, technical report, how to write professional communications and also project management systems. Uh, here PMO is quite important, I think for everybody because PMO is how to lead all of the projects in the organization. And last, if you want to take that diploma level seven, definitely here you need to have research methodology. Uh, if you want to have this as a dissertation, so later you can top up, but top up is different. So top up, it means you take the dissertation from one of uh, our partners. We have partners, Cardiff Metro, so you can have dissertation from Cardiff Metro and you can have a master in project management from Cardiff Metro. Yeah, here is uh, the game. So now we are in October. We have only 10 days left. So only 10 hours CBD, okay? I will give you access to all of them. You pick what you love and your mentor will help you with that, okay? So this month, just warming up. From 1st of November, we'll start PMP. This is a little bit workload, high workload. Then from Jan to April, workload will go down. Teaching load will go down things will be better. So only two hours uh, uh, a week. But uh, from November to December, this is would be a lot because we are aiming for PMP by Christmas. So it will be six hours a week, just for uh, only six, six weeks. From Jan to April, break two hours a week only. From May to June, again, we will go for three hours, six hours a week. From July to August, two hours a week. Again, again. So two hours a week, and then six hours a week, and then two hours a week, then six hours a week, then two hours a week. <laughs> uh, can we have a schedule? I mean, uh, uh, just to Yeah, you can exactly. drop. Yep. You can drop this one. So if you th think this is too much, you can drop this one and replace this by, um, by CPDs. I'm, I'm good. I think the question was, was is there a schedule? Because it would just be useful to get some of this planned in diaries now before it fills up with yes. the chaos that is work life. <laughs> and that's what I'm sharing from now. So even the days, I'm going to say the days. So if you can book this in your calendar, that would be great. It is not everything obligatory. As Again, it's up to you. So And all of them online and recorded. So just in case if you miss one, it's still recorded, so no worry, you know? Great, thank you. But I'm trying here to balance the workload. So some weeks we will have a little bit high workload because we are in for professional certification. If you feel tired, for example, SP, you still have access to the recording and you have the CPDs, you can say, okay, look, drop this one. Let's go for CPDs, easy and manageable. Because CBD is like one hour, two hours, one hour, two hours, short courses, short certification, that's fine. 
Okay. Uh, this is, I would say, the maximum because this is so much. Trust me, this is too much. But it's good to have two certifications and uh, one uh, module from the from the master program. These CBDs you have access, so you can pick what you wish. So you can have, I would say, from 10 to 20 hours, maximum 20 because too much. 10 is good to warm up. You have one in project development and project preparation and budgeting. And I would say if I were you, I think most of your seniors. So I will go for that one. Leadership, foundation in business skills. This is quite interesting. Coaching and the mentoring skills. Uh, working in teams. Uh, I would definitely... If I pick for you, I would say take working in teams and take leadership delegation of authority. This is, I would say, if you can have more time, but this is pretty stressful, you can have foundation in business skills maybe for Safa and for Simon. Because Simon, I know, is like uh, taking a very senior position in his company and he is looking for building up new opportunities. So it's good to have some business skills before we go to the war. Yeah. So this is the days. If you want to write down the days from now so you know uh, the plan ahead. So from 1st of November to mid of December, we will have a Fridays from 3 to 6 p.m. Tuesdays, 3 to 6 p.m. This is for PMP. Hopefully, I will book for you the voucher but if you don't want to take the exam, please let me know. Okay, for PMP. So later I will take uh, uh, preferences. So some of you say, look, I don't want to have the certificate. I just want to learn. I, because PMP exam is demanding. It's, it's, it needs a lot of effort. So if you don't want to take the exam, just let me know. If you are looking for the exam, please let me know so I can book for you the exam. Uh, I advise to make the exam first week of January last week of December, as you wish, based on your workload, but don't make it after that, after a couple of months. It's just we take it, we finish it, because it's a prestigious, trust me, it's very prestigious certification, and it's worth to, to take the, the, the risk, especially this one. Others, easy, but that one, it's, a, it's an important milestone. You don't need to take the certificate. If you don't want to take the certificate, just let me know. We can just take the material without the certification and it will be fine. Mm -hmm. Then we go for level seven, the module. It is only two hours Friday from three to four, okay, for uh, six weeks. So it will be easy because only two hours uh, every week for um, eight weeks. Then we go for that, which is demanding and it's optional. If you feel this is too much stress, don't take it. This is another certification is scheduled uh, professional. Again, you can replace this by the uh, uh, leadership certification from NHS Academy. Uh, you can replace this by CPD. I think maybe Mastery could replace this by ITIL. So for me, I'm okay. It is it's based on your requirements. Okay. Yeah. And then we go for CPD courses. So this is slow down because I know usually people in August, they have breaks. So no any live interactive teaching all July and all August, no live interactive. This is will be calming down because in September we have another war, another fight. Okay. Yeah, happy so far? Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Steve. Always happy, I'm good. Excellent, excellent. I'm very happy to know that. Excellent. Simon. Yes, that's all wonderful. Thank you. Excellent, excellent. Irene. Yeah. Super, super. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Safa. Yeah, all good. Excellent, excellent. The all good and yeah, it seems like boring me, but it's okay. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, uh, for me, it's a three years. It's just I'm um, thinking about three years from now. Yeah, don't worry. Long, yeah. Don't worry about the number of years. Okay, we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, if you wish, any time to reduce this, we can. That's fine. Okay. 
So anytime that you feel, okay, I'm happy and I want to, to finalize this, you can have this. That's absolutely fine. No need to worry at all about that. Everything is under control because literally the process is quite straightforward. And now the law allows to reduce, but we may lose some of the certifications. It's the only thing. But if we can, if you have, if you want to have this, that's fine also. So that would be okay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we have with us here, oh, he just left, I think. Uh, he will be the mentor with you, okay? Uh, most of you, I think. He is a senior lecturer in project management at Downfront University. I'm always here, so you can contact me directly. I will teach PMP. Uh, he is helping me. He is very senior guy. He is like very professional. He, by the way, he has a lot of experience with Aramco. I'm sure you know about Aramco, and he led so many successful projects. So coming from very professional background, plus of course his academic background and working for uh, Dunfront University. Uh, safeguarding. I know you are mature enough. You know, no problem with safeguarding. But this is by law. Safeguarding. It means if your daddy <laughs> treats you badly, you should talk to us. I'm sorry to say, but you ha I have to say this. <laughs> so if anyone, you know, make any trouble in your life, it's good to report to us. So we report to the police. So the police will prosecute your, uh, your partner. <laughs> anyway, it's not my business, but we should have something called safeguarding, which is protecting our, st our, our, our students and our learners. Uh, because apprenticeship was designed mainly for young people, and that's why safeguarding was important. But now we still have the same rules, safeguarding, which means if you feel being threatened by any person, by any tutor, by any teacher, by any professional, by anything in your life, please just report this to Professor Yusuf Sultan, uh, and he will take this to next step. Um, definitely nobody faces any problem, but this is a system. We have technical mentor with us. Uh, he will contact all of you WhatsApp. I think already contacted you. He's called Hussam, but his nickname is Ayn. It's quite interesting anyway. Uh, so you will receive email from Hussam. Uh, you can call him Ayn Hussam as you wish. And if you need any help on the software application, anything, he will have sessions with you. The customer manager is Yumna. So if you have anything, please contact him. And definitely, I would say I'm the first contact. Anything, just come back to me. I'm glad I'm not happy here. I want this, have this. Please, the workload is too much. Workload is too little. I have a space for extra. Mm, I think it is better to now let's, make, let's take this free. If you feel sometimes, you know, I don't want to take this course now. Let me push this later next year. That's fine. We can have this. It's completely flexible. So no need to be stressed at all. Here we, we are here to help you. This is the most important thing is to, I, I don't want to be satisfied. So if satisfied, definitely I want you to be satisfied, but literally satisfaction with knowledge, satisfaction with competence. So you get something at the end. Yep. Next. So next step, you expect a call or a email from your mentor to uh, to have like uh, orientation for you on, on Aptim, how to use a software, how to uh, download the videos, how to, you know, uh, manage the meeting with your uh, vendor. I think already you know that, Steve. I think Steve and the Irene already familiar with Aptim. Yeah? Yes, sorry, they've got to play a bit in there. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent, super. So maybe Simon, Asafa, and the Masri, maybe, uh, maybe Ayman will have a meeting with you to discuss with you and to help you with the application. It's quite easy, straightforward, uh, and very nice, but it's good to be familiar with it. Yeah, I have, I have been on it. Oh, <laughs> you have it, excellent. Yeah, yeah, I have it. I've been on there, and it just confused me a little bit. I just have to ask for help. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll get there. <laughs> Yes, excellent, excellent, super. Yeah, Zan, see, not a good project manager, still have 20 minutes, but it's good for questions anyway. <laughs> yeah, so what well, do you think, guys? Uh, I'm thinking about uh, the certification, as you mentioned, it's something very important. Uh, how we are going to practice and uh, maybe having like dump 
question, something like that. Yes, so the point is we are open to how we should help you to practice this. So uh, your mentor or myself will have a meeting with you to discuss how you do your business and it's up to you if you want to share or not. Then we will think together how to apply this into current practice. It is not something must, definitely it's not, but it is all how to upgrade your performance. So let's say, for example, we finish time planning, then you have a meeting with your mentor. How do you plan your time? You know, what are the tools you are using? These tools, great. These tools, not. Why? So how we can put this into action? And that's why your mentor should be very, very professional because he should share with you the experience how to use this. You don't, you, of course, you cannot use all of the tools. You cannot use all of the solutions. It's impossible. But at the end of the day, you have the test of the food. So you tested this, so you know, mm, I tried this tool. I think it's good, but I'm not going to use it anymore. Mm -mm. This tool is delicious. I'm going to use this every day, you know? So we hopefully help you to put some of the tools into action so we can, you can see the result, your employer sees the result. It's not academic knowledge just to, to take the exam. Most important is to see results. Okay. Yeah. Usually for some employers who are very helpful, we index the current KPIs. So we know the current KPIs and then we work together to change the KPIs from the current as is to the to be. So again, I, this is not something I can enforce, but if you are happy with this, we can have open meeting and then discuss the current KPIs, current performance. And this is part of consultancy business. But again, it's this apprenticeship. It is all about to improve the performance. So we give you the best practice. If I don't know, I will go to the research consultants and tell you the right solution. So hopefully, we upgrade together to see results in the business as usual. Yes, of course. Uh, right now I'm working on uh, the IT governance and I'm planning for the KPI, all those kind of things. And of course, consultancy would be something uh, very appreciated, yeah. Yes, yes, we have nice, we have a good access to a lot of KPIs, so we can share some of them to you. So this can help you to upgrade fast, you know, use us. It's good to use us, you know. We are not normal tutors who just have a bachelor degree and then come to teach a module. It's We have a lot of experience, so it's good to use us. All right. Excellent. Uh, uh, for the upcoming sessions and everything, it will be on Aptim, right? No, no, it will be on Zoom, but the recording will be on Aptim. No, no, I mean uh, the schedule, because I'm really care yes. about schedule sometime, because, you know... It's a Fridays only. Okay. okay. Fridays, always book Fridays, three to six or three to five. Okay. That's it. We have Tuesdays from 1st of November to mid of December. And then only Fridays. Okay. And this will be written somewhere. Yeah, yeah. On Active, so you have a schedule. Okay. You can connect this to your calendar so you can see this in your calendar. Oh. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but don't worry, we have only, you know, uh, only, only, only Fridays, only Fridays. We don't have other days. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Have you so far, guys? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Happy. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So um, I'm hoping for you the best. And I believe we can have something really good together. Uh, trust me, this is, will be very good experience. And for me also to be good experience, usually I take my students from like 10 years of teaching. I love to take the journey with my learners, with my staff, with my team and uh, see the results. It's important for me and for you to see that it's not just studying for fun, but really something you can see results at the end. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. You have my phone number 
and shortly your uh, your your uh, mentor will contact you to have a quick meeting with you. Maybe I'll be your mentor, so I'll have one-to-one -one meeting with you just for any tailoring, for tuning, for fine touch, just to ensure that we are on the right track. Yep. Thank you. Right, I'm good. Yes, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Till next time. Bye-bye. See you, guys. Uh -huh. Catch up later. Okay, bye.